हेलो फ्रेंड्स मैं आपका दोस्त डॉक्टर राकेश मित्तल अब आई एन में एक ही महीना बचा है सो आई विल बी कमिंग आउट विद सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स फ्रॉम द सर्जरी टॉपिक इम्पॉर्टेंट एरियाज जहां पर पिछले कुछ सालों में क्वेश्चंस बार बार पूछे गए हैं ठीक है तो हम उनको डिस्कस करेंगे ये शॉर्ट वीडियोस रहेंगे आपको टाइम वेस्ट करने की ज़रूरत नहीं है आप चाय पी रहे हैं शाम को हॉस्टल में खाना खा रहे हैं या यू आर टेकिंग अ वॉक यू कैन क्विकली सी दीज वीडियोज एंड दिस विल ऑलमोस्ट कवर सेवेंटी टू एटी परसेंट ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट एरियाज ऑफ द टॉपिक सो स्टार्टिंग विद द ब्रेस्ट डक्ट पेपिलोमा इज अ बिनाइन डिसीज इट्स अ सिंगल डक डिसीज मोस्ट कॉमन प्रजेंटेशन इज ब्लड स्टेन निपल डिस्चार्ज इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस इज डक्टोग्राफी और गलेक्टोग्राफी एंड ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस माइक्रोडोकेक्टमी राइट Another disease, ductectasia or periductal mastitis. It's again a benign, but contrast to duct papilloma, it's a multi-ductal disease. The most common presentation is bluish or greenish colored nipple discharge with slit-like nipple retraction. Occasionally, few patients may have underlying lump, and it can lead to chronic abscess formation in the breast, which is known as Juskar's disease. Investigation of choice is again ductography or galactography. and the treatment of choice is head fields operation cone excision of the major ducts now the risk factors there are lots of them but the most important is estrogen the hormonal drive right so which patients are more susceptible for excessive estrogen ex exposure early menarche late menopause elderly prime gravida patient nulli parity is a risk factor ocp is not all of them newer generation they do not have that much concentration of estrogen so some of them the older one particularly they uh, still carry high risk hrt is a risk factor and the only protective factor is lactation or breastfeeding now the genetics and other risk factors the brca genes brca 1 and 2 locations you should know the long arm of chromosome 17 and 13 the other risk factors p53 KI sixty seven is particularly very important. We'll talk about it in molecular classification. It is indicator of mitotic index. Another very important is HER two new receptors or C up B two receptors known as growth factor receptors. The other are epidermal growth factor receptors, transforming growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, insulin like growth factor, and vascular endothelial growth factor. Now this is very important. Gale model. It's a risk assessment of a woman. to have breast cancer in her lifetime okay now the pathology overall there are broadly two types ductal cancers and lobular cancers invasive cancers are more common than in situ cancers overall the most common type is invasive ductal cancer or infiltrating ductal cancer more common than invasive lobular cancer the most common pathological type again very important the fibrous or sclerous type Uh, which is also called NOS or NST. That is uh, nothing otherwise specified or uh, a no specific type. It is one of the most malignant type of breast cancer, so it carries worst prognosis. Lobular cancers in general they tend to be bilateral, multifocal, and multicentric. The most common site clinically for breast cancer is upper outer quadrant. The least common is exactly opposite lower inner quadrant this is the difference between multifocal and multicentric multifocal means multiple tumor deposits but within the same quadrant of the breast but multicentric when multiple foci of the tumor scattered across the different or multiple quadrants of the breast now pages this is again very important it's a superficial skin manifestation of underlying breast malignancy and the most common cancers it is associated with ductal cancers both ductal carcinoma in situ and infiltrating ductal cancer the classical clinical presentation is chronic eczematous lesion of the nipple and areola so it has to be differentiated from the routine eczematous condition of the skin ulceration of the nipple discharge discharging nipple which is also called the weeping nipple and last stages nipple may be completely destroyed some patients around 40 to 50% can have underlying lump 
Now the workup of the breast cancer most important triple assessment has been asked before it constitutes of clinical examination, radiological imaging in the form of mammogram or MRI or ultrasound and tissue sampling in the form of FNAC or the biopsy. Mammogram there are two views taken craniocaudal and MLO that is mediolateral oblique view. The dose it has been asked previously 0.1 centigrade per breast and in a normal risk women this is the best screening tool. For high risk women the best screening tool is MRI. The malignant findings on radiology, high density irregular mass, irregular margins, speckled margins, micro calcifications particularly very important which are clustered and pleomorphic in nature and architectural distortion or attenuation. Now the Byrates breast imaging reporting and data system you should know the full form and the stages it is labeled as 0 when the investigation is incomplete 1 is negative 2 is benign 3 is probably benign 4 is suspicious of malignancy 5 is highly suggestive of malignancy and 6 is confirmed malignancy only proven by FNAC or biopsy. As I have already told you MRI is the screening investigation of choice in high risk women. If the question is asked about normal risk women then it is mammogram. Regarding the spread overall the most common route of spread is uh, lymph nodes. The predominant lymph nodes are axillary lymph nodes. Hematogenous spread the most common is to the bones lumbosacral spine and they are classically osteolytic or osteoclastic that is bone destroying metastasis. Now the chest wall involvement by a breast cancer means involvement of either ribs, intercostal muscles or serratus anterior. Please remember not pectoralis major. Involvement of pectoralis major is not considered chest wall involvement. Skin, the skin involvement, satellite skin nodules, ulcers, edema which is called pudiorange. Again very very important. What is pudiorange? Edema of the skin due to blockade of subdermal lymphatics and another skin involvement cancer and cuirass this is basically direct skin infiltration uh, looks like an armor coat these are the two pictures this is pudiorange and this is armor coat appearance which is cancer and cuirass now the axillary lymph nodes last INICT and NEET also questions have been asked about axillary lymph nodes this is anatomical division you have read in anatomy also pectoral which is also the anterior group along the pectoralis minor on the pectoralis minor along the lateral thoracic vessels. Subscapular which is the posterior group on the subscapularis muscle along the subscapular vessels. Then the lateral group brachial which is along the third part of the axilla. Central group in the central part of fat at the base of axilla and the apical group the highest level which is at the apex of the axilla. Now this is the anatomical. So that is the anterior group along the pectoralis minor along the lateral thoracic vessels then uh, the posterior along the subscapula then the lateral along the third part of the brachial vein then the central and the apical. Another the clinical classification this is again very very important. We divide lymph nodes into three levels 1, 2 and 3 and this is according to the that is a pectoralis minor. The lymph nodes outside the pectoralis minor this is level 1, the lymph nodes behind the pectoralis minor this is level 2 and the lymph nodes on the inner side that means the medial side these are the level 3 axillary lymph nodes. Thank you friends. <laughs>